Welcome, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, with your propaganda watch for the week of September 15th, 2018. And do you ever go back and look at some of that old-timey war propaganda of yesteryear and think to yourself, these cartoon illustrations, these caricatures of the enemy, the evil lurking boogeyman enemy lurk, be, lurking behind every corner and under every bed and in the bathroom, apparently, is so transparently ridiculous and obvious that no one could have really fallen for this, surely. I mean, how stupid would you have to have been to believe these stupid, ridiculous caricatures? Oh, wait. And then do you ever look at the stupid, ridiculous, cartoon-like caricatures of our current day and age and think that it's any different? I mean, do you think 50 years from now people might be looking back at some of this and wondering how anyone fell for it? Well, I, this comes to mind because, of course, in recent days I've been reporting on the coming false flag chemical weapons attack in Idlib, the, uh, the one that Assad is preparing, according to the U.S. and its obedient lapdogs in the corporate-controlled media, um, Haretz and others. There are no end to the number of outlets that are reporting on this. Trust us, guys. We know weeks, perhaps months in advance, we, we have a crystal ball and we know that this is being prepared and at some point it's going to be used. And uh, don't ask us how we know specifically. Uh, don't don't drill too down too far down into any of the details. Well, I think you can use your imagination how they know there's going to be some sort of chemical weapons incident in Idlib, just as they say there was in Duma and East Ghouta and other places over the last several years. And of course, I go through all of this in my most recent subscriber uh, editorial here, of course, always linked up on the front page or available from the newsletter section of my website, False Flags Over Syria. And I drill through the history and go through some of these incidents, like, for example, the Duma, alleged Duma attack from earlier this year, where both American and British reporters, of course, concluded actually there was no chemical weapons attack. Or uh, there was a 2013, an early 2013 claim that uh, the Syrian government was using sarin when actually the UN Human Rights Commissioner, uh, Carla Del Ponte, said no, actually it was the rebel forces using it, not the Syrian government. But of course, the, the claim that it was the Syrian government got all the attention. The counter uh, narrative, oh, actually, no, it was the rebels, didn't seem to get so much uh, pull from the establishment corporate lapdog press for some reason. Or the uh, August 21st, 2013 East Ghouta attack, which... Uh, uh, even MIT came out with a report in 2014 saying, well, actually, the munitions uh, came from rebel-held areas of East Good, not government-held areas, as was alleged by the U.S. and its allies. So that's odd. Or, uh, I mean, there are any number of details like this that you can drill down to in all of these different allegations. But when we do so, when we follow all these rabbit holes and, and go through all the details, it in some way misses a fundamental point, a much more fundamental point than going through and showing, well, actually, no, that was the rebels. Oh, actually, no, that was fake. It never happened at all. I actually, no, that was the rebels. Oh, you miss the fundamental question, which is, why? Why would Assad use chemical weapons in this, especially in these types of situations, in this type of warfare, where you have rebel-held areas in close geographical proximity to uh, the, the government-held areas, where th with these types of weapons that disperse, uh, you can't really control in which way they're dispersed, uh, you could be inflicting damage on your own side by simply deploying them, uh, let alone... I mean, the fundamental point, which uh, Moon of Alabama makes in this recent post, Syria U.S. reveals underpants plan for indefinite occupation. The fundamental point, chemical warfare is ineffective. That is why everyone agreed to ban it. There is a universal ban on chemical warfare because, well, actually, it turns out it's not really useful in any sort of military way. So we can afford to ban it. Uh, I mean, nuclear weapons aren't banned because, well, they're actually really effective in warfare. So let's not ban them. Let's ban chemical warfare because, again, we can all agree it's not really that useful. That's the fundamental underlying point. So why would Assad use it knowing that A, it's ineffective, B, it's, it's uncontrollable, unpredictable, it's going to probably turn back against you as much as it's going to inflict damage on the other side. The damage it does inflict is going to be incredibly isolated and, and localized. Um, as opposed to if you just wanted to get rid of people, if you just wanted to kill willy-nilly and wantonly, you could just draw, drop good old normal munitions and kill m many more people much more qu uh, quickly and efficiently. But also the, the other underlying point of this is, well, why would Assad do this knowing, full well knowing this is the one thing that is going to invite 
this type of scorn and vitriol, universal condemnation from the international community, and the guarantee, the absolute guarantee that bombs will rain down on his country as a result of any use of chemical weapons. I mean, th- again, I read even read these controlled stories in the controlled corporate press. They're all... They're all painting the exact picture. Well, the U.S. already has war plans. They already know where they're going to bomb and what they're going to do in the event of this chemical weapons attack that we know is coming. So why would Assad turn to that level, especially when they're on the verge of routing the jihadis from Idlib? Why would you turn to chemical weapons knowing that it would invite this type of retribution to rain down on your head. Is Assad not only the kind of vampiric, bloodthirsty monster of this this type of cartoon character, but also suicidal, (laughs) also has a death wish, knowing that this is the one thing that will absolutely guarantee uh, his entire country being bombed into oblivion? Well, that is a question, and believe it or not, the New York Times did at least pay lip service to giving an attempt at answering that question last year when these questions were being raised in April of 2017 during one of the previous chemical weapons uh, incidents um, in in which they they penned this op-ed, the grim logic behind Syria's chemical weapons attack. And they, they raised the question quite explicitly. So why would Mr. Assad risk it all, outraging the world by attacking civilians with what Turkey now says was the nerve agent sarin, killing scores of people, many of them children? Why would he inflict the deadliest chemical strike since the 2013 attacks outside Damascus? Those attacks came close to bringing American military re- retaliation then, and in a stunningly swift reversal, Tuesday's attack drew a response from President Trump. Dozens of cruise missiles launched at a Syrian airbase. Let's not forget that. Back in April 2017, Trump and uh, and Tillerson were talking about, well, well, maybe there's a place for Assad and maybe we should back off and maybe we should let a diplomatic uh, resolution come of this. And then there was this chemical weapons outrage, so there was a serious strikes. And then in 2018, again, more talk about, uh, well, maybe there's a room for the, the table for negotiation. And then the chemical weapons attack and all of that talk is off the table. Hmm. Any, any pattern going on there? But, but this is the question. Why? Why would he inflict this, this own goal, as it were, um, of the most ridiculous car- uh, uh, degree possible? And it, they even say, well, one of the main defenses offered by Mr. Assad's allies and supporters. And by the way, no, just for the 18,000th time, I am not an ally or supporter of Mr. Assad. I am not an apologist for the Assad government. The Syrian people can and should do whatever they feel like with regards to the Assad government and its place over them. But actually, at this point, there is widespread support for the Assad government. And you might want to qu- consider why that is. If it is, if this type of cartoonish propaganda is true, why? Why are so many Syrians on the side of Assad? And just another question, maybe, to to raise in all of these whys, but they do provide something of an answer here. And uh, they talk about uh, Dr. Monzer Khalil, Idlib province's health director, said such extreme tactics aimed to demonstrate the government's impunity and to demoralize its foes. It makes us feel that we are defeated, said Dr. Khalil, whose gums bled after he was exposed to scores of chemical victims on Tuesday. The international community will stay gazing at what's happening and observing the explosive barrels falling and rockets bombing the civilians in the hospitals and the civil defense and killing children and medical staff without doing anything. Militarily, there's no need, but it spreads the message. You are at our mercy. Don't ask for international law. You see, it doesn't protect even a child. So this is the logic that they want you to believe is behind seven years now of Assad wantonly bloodletting of his own civilians, killing, well, fill in the blank. I mean, whatever number is being thrown around, 250,000 or... I'm sure it's up to 500,000 by now. Whatever number they're throwing around this week. All of them dead at the hands of Assad. This bloodthirsty, literal blood-drinking tyrant monster who just, for whatever reason, has such an insane bloodlust and a suicide death wish that he's willing to let the uh, chemical weapons fly on his own own populations. Uh, just just to spread a message that you are at our mercy. <laughs> because apparently killing people and whatever else he is doing, at least according to the, the, the narrative, isn't enough. It has to be with chemical weapons specifically. <laughs> Again, this is, this is the sum total of the New York Times attempt at, uh, at, at trying to tell you why Assad is such a suicidal maniac. So 
I just, I mean, I just put the question out there. Does is that is that really convincing? Is that is that really the the logic of the situation here, or could it be that a chemical weapons attack is being planned for Idlib, or at least staged? Um, to be shown on the TVs as having taken place in Idlib for a different reason altogether. And what, what could that, what could that reason be? Why, why do you think that they're going after Assad in this particular way? I mean, it's just, oh, I don't know. If only the New York Times could write an explainer saying what the actual imperatives are in Syria and why they're actually doing all of this. I, I don't know. Oh. I guess it's just a mystery that will never be answered. Right, guys? Anyway. Well, that's your thought for the week on this propaganda watch. Just asking that interesting question. Why? Why? The question that they they never wanted you to ask before. And they, they don't seem to want you to ask these days. That's going to do it for today. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.